Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Military Forces Unleashed. Today we're diving into the story of the Alvaro de Bazan class frigates, Spain's bold entry into the modern naval arms race. These ships are often celebrated for their cutting-edge Aegis combat system, but as with any military marvel, the reality isn't all smooth sailing. So buckle up as we explore the highs and lows of these high-tech warships, from their ambitious design to the challenges they faced in real-world deployments. We did it! A huge thank you to every single one of you for getting us to 1,000 subscribers. You've been the fuel, the firepower, and the reason this channel is taking off like a supersonic jet. But as every good commander knows, victory in one battle means it's time to gear up for the next mission. So here's the new objective, 4,000 hours of watch time. We're aiming high, and I'm counting on you to help get us there. Let's crush this next target together. Stay sharp, stay engaged, and let's make some history. The Alvaro de Bazan class, also known as the F-100 frigates, was born out of Spain's desire to modernize its navy and take a leading role in NATO operations. Named after the 16th century Spanish admiral Alvaro de Bazan, these frigates were designed with a clear mission, to project power and provide top-tier air defense. Spain looked to the United States for inspiration, and what better model than the highly regarded Arleigh Burke class destroyers? The idea was to create a frigate that could punch above its weight, equipped with the Aegis combat system, an advanced radar and missile guidance system that could track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. However, creating a frigate that could seamlessly integrate into NATO operations was no small task. Spain's shipbuilders at Navantia faced the challenge of designing a vessel that could carry the Aegis system while meeting the budget constraints and operational needs of the Spanish Navy. The result was a ship that on paper seemed to offer the best of both worlds, advanced capabilities at a fraction of the cost of a full-fledged destroyer. The Alvaro de Bazan class features a sleek, stealthy design aimed at reducing radar cross-section, a key factor in modern naval warfare. The frigate's hull measures 147 meters in length, with a beam of 18.6 meters. This isn't just about looking good on the high seas, every inch of this ship is designed to minimize its detectability by enemy radars. But stealth comes with its own set of challenges, particularly in balancing the need for armor and the demand for speed and agility. The Aegis system, the crown jewel of the ship's design, is integrated into a superstructure that houses the SPY-1D radar, a powerful system capable of tracking over 100 targets simultaneously. The ship's layout is also designed to support a variety of missions, from anti-aircraft warfare to anti-submarine operations. However, fitting all of this technology into a frigate-sized vessel was no easy feat. The compact design meant that space was at a premium, leading to some compromises in crew comfort and operational flexibility. The Alvaro de Bazan class frigates are often touted as Spain's answer to the big guns of the naval world, but let's be clear, these ships were built with a budget in mind. Yes, they are armed with a 48-cell vertical launch system, VLS, which can fire both standard missiles, SM-2, and evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, ESSM. This setup gives the ship some teeth, providing robust air defense capabilities that allow it to engage enemy aircraft and missiles at considerable distances. Think of it as a well-stocked toolbox, but with just enough space for the essentials. Now add to that the Harpoon anti-ship missiles, which give these frigates the ability to reach out and touch enemy vessels. The 127mm naval gun, meanwhile, is your go-to for dealing with smaller surface threats or providing fire support during coastal operations. And let's not forget the torpedo tubes, which are crucial for anti-submarine warfare. On paper, this looks like a pretty formidable setup. But before you get too excited, let's take a step back. While the armament is undoubtedly impressive for a frigate, we need to remember that this is still a frigate, not a destroyer. The 48-cell VLS might sound like a lot, but compared to larger warships like the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, it is a bit like bringing a solid multi-tool to a survivalist convention. Useful, but not exactly overkill. These VLS cells are fewer in number, meaning that in a prolonged engagement, the Alvaro de Bazan class could find itself running out of options quicker than its heftier counterparts. This is the classic dilemma of balancing firepower with budget constraints. The Spanish Navy needed a ship that could hold its own in a fight, but not one that would break the bank. So, while the Alvaro de Bazan class can deliver a respectable punch, it's not designed for the kind of heavy, sustained combat operations that larger destroyers or cruisers might undertake. Instead, it is more of a specialized tool, 
perfect for specific tasks, but not something you would want to rely on in every situation. The decision to limit the number of VLS cells is a clear indicator of the trade-offs that were made. Spain needed a ship that could fit within a certain budget, and this meant making compromises. The Alvaro de Bazan class can certainly pack a punch when needed, but it is not the kind of ship you would want to send into a prolonged slugfest. It is a solid, versatile platform, but one that operates best within the context of a broader, multifaceted naval strategy, where other, more heavily armed vessels can take the lead in sustained combat scenarios. Under the hood, the Alvaro de Bazan class is powered by a combined diesel or gas Kodag, propulsion system, which includes two General Electric LM2500 gas turbines and two Bazan Bravo 12V diesel engines. This setup allows the frigate to reach speeds of up to 28.5 knots and gives it the range to operate effectively in both coastal and open ocean environments. The Kodag system offers a good balance between speed and fuel efficiency, which is crucial for extended deployments. However, the system isn't without its quirks. The transition between diesel and gas turbines can be complex, requiring skilled operators to manage the changeover smoothly. Additionally, while the Kodog setup provides redundancy, it also adds to the complexity of maintenance and repairs, particularly during long missions where the ship might not have immediate access to shore-based support. The Alvaro de Bazan class frigates have been put to the test in various NATO-led operations, where they've served as the backbone of Spain's naval contributions. These frigates have been deployed in the Mediterranean, the Gulf of Aden, and the Indian Ocean, participating in everything from anti-piracy missions to joint exercises with other NATO navies. The Alvaro de Bazan class frigates have been put to the test in various NATO-led operations, where they've served as the backbone of Spain's naval contributions. These frigates have been deployed in the Mediterranean, the Gulf of Aden, and the Indian Ocean, participating in everything from anti-piracy missions to joint exercises with other NATO navies. While the Alvaro de Bazan class frigates have been hailed as a significant leap forward in naval technology, particularly with the inclusion of the Aegis combat system, this innovation came at a steep price. Literally. The decision to integrate Aegis, a system usually reserved for larger, more heavily armed ships like destroyers, significantly inflated the cost of these frigates. This led to a fair amount of head-scratching among both military planners and taxpayers, especially considering Spain's economic situation during the development period. At a time when the country was facing austerity measures, the hefty price tag of these advanced frigates sparked a debate. Was the technological leap worth the financial burden, or could Spain have achieved similar capabilities with a more cost-effective solution? Another point of contention is the frigate's compact design. On paper, the smaller size of the Alvaro de Bazan class seems like a smart move. It keeps costs down, reduces the ship's radar cross-section for improved stealth, and makes it easier to maneuver in tight spots. But this compactness comes with its own set of limitations. Unlike larger NATO counterparts like the Arleigh Burke class destroyers or the Type 45 destroyers, the Alvaro de Bazan class has limited room for future upgrades. This is particularly concerning in an era where technological advancements can render even the most advanced ships outdated in a matter of years. Critics argue that while the frigates are state-of-the-art today, their smaller size could limit their effectiveness and longevity as new systems and weapons are developed. Furthermore, the size also affects the ship's endurance and operational flexibility. With less space for fuel, provisions, and crew accommodations, the Alvaro de Bazan class is somewhat limited in its ability to sustain long-duration missions compared to its larger peers. This raises questions about the frigate's ability to operate effectively in extended deployments or in high-intensity conflict scenarios where resupply opportunities might be scarce. While the frigates certainly pack a lot of capability into a smaller package, there's a growing concern that they may not be as future-proof as initially hoped, potentially leading to higher costs down the line if substantial retrofits or replacements become necessary sooner than anticipated. Despite the challenges, the Alvaro de Bazan class remains a symbol of Spain's naval ambitions and its commitment to playing a leading role in NATO operations. These frigates represent a significant step forward for the Spanish Navy, demonstrating that a smaller country can still field a modern, capable fleet. The F-100s have earned their place in the fleet and in the history books, not just for their capabilities, but for what they represent, a nation's determination to innovate and remain relevant in an ever-changing military landscape. But as with any symbol of power, the Alvaro de Bazan class also serves as a reminder of the trade-offs that come with pushing the boundaries of technology, these frigates are a testament to what can be achieved with determination and innovation, but they also highlight the challenges of balancing capability, cost, 
and sustainability in modern naval warfare. That's all for this episode of Military Forces Unleashed. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Alvaro de Bazan class, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you never miss an episode. Got thoughts or questions? Drop them in the comments below, we'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And remember, in the world of naval warfare, it's not just about having the best technology, it's about knowing how to use it effectively. Stay sharp!